Hello everyone, welcome to Play Canvas Office Hours, where we work through problems posted by the community. I'm Stephen Yell, otherwise known as Yast on the forums, and today we're looking at a forum thread uh, about mesh deformation in Play Canvas, uh, where the topic poster wants to use a Play Canvas engine example. Uh, so, um, so Play Canvas uh, engine example code within an editor project, but doesn't know how to effectively port the code across and this is actually quite a common question that's on the forums where people look at the engine example demos in general and go like so how do i use this in an editor um and we don't really have a guide for it so i thought this would be a good opportunity for an office hours type style video where i can talk more about the differences and similarities and what uh, how to sort of move the code over and what to do um and to talk a little bit more about the engine examples the engine examples are as you can see uh, a list of different uh, effects or um, show examples of different features of the engine um, where it's using the engine only and not the editor and the reason why we do, uh, we do this one is because the engine is available uh, as source only so not everyone has to use the editor and the other is that we as we're developing new features um, we actually usually create an engine example to test that as a way of testing that feature and showing how to use it first before we pull, uh, move over to the editor. And an example of this is where we've done this with um, the recent clustered lighting uh, feature, which uh, Martin has done, uh, I think mid last year, and slowly built up the examples and worked through all the bugs and features or that he wanted to fix and implement and been do and have done so via uh, these like play canvas engine examples and other developers have been picked and uh, picked that up and used it within their own projects. And now we've got uh, more formal documentation. We got so we have got more formal documentation coming over the next uh, couple of weeks, and uh, we'll actually do a more public announcement about it because we would like people to uh, have a test drive, of, sorry, test drive of Cluster Lighting uh, to see if there are any issues, uh, have it tried against a bigger variety of projects uh, to ensure that when we roll out, there's little to no issues with it. Anyway, going back to uh, the actual topic of the video, the one uh, we're going to use the example that uh, they wanted to use as the, uh, for the video, which is mesh deformation, where it takes a model, it takes a mesh, and mo effectively moves all the vertices in a wavy like pattern like this. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, create a new project. So da -da -da, create a new project. Uh, we've already used the model viewer starter kit for this, and we go F8. Uh, model deformation. Great. And uh, as this move, as the example is def uh, moving actual vertices of the mesh, or what I'm going to do is actually import a model that has more vertices for us to play around and have a good look at. So, run use a cube example which has very few actual like vertices on the on the y axis. We're going to use uh, I think the Stanford Dragon. So let me just drag that in. And let's get rid of the key map. Delete. Now let's get rid of what's new because I know what's new. And delete this. And put the dragon into the scene. Did I just delete the cube map and not the seat? Uh, I deleted the cube map, haven't I? And that's. Let me go back. Um, let's restore this. No, I don't want to create the chip point. So I accidentally created, uh, deleted the cube app and not the cube, which is what I wanted to do. So let's go back and start again. Um, delete the cube, delete the cube folder, re-import dragon, FBX, and let's add that to the scene. Uh, let's add the template that's generated to the scene. So let's add the model hierarchy, so we've got the mesh, and let's scale up a bit. So let's put it to one. One should be big enough. There we go, that's awesome. And let's run that to make sure that looks okay. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go back to the code in the Playgrounds engine example. Now, oh, what's it gone? Da, da, da. Here you go. So, this is, uh, first of all, this is written in ES, uh, JavaScript ES6, uh, which allows you to use, uh, which, sorry, which gives you functionality such as const and let instead of var. And 
pretty net, pretty much uh, ES6 is now the standard because it's pretty much supported everywhere except for Internet Explorer 11. And this is why some of the code looks a bit different to the edit example tutorials that, uh, that you've seen before because uh, quite a lot of them was written back when IE 11 was more popular or still had a, re a relative foothold in uh, the user and the sorry, user marketplace. However, that's probably changed now. We're, I'm starting to think maybe we should move some of the examples to ES6, but that's a conversation uh, later down the road. For the moment, for the consistency of the code we see here and the example, uh, I'm going to keep to ES6. So let's go through uh, the example code here. Uh, the assets are always automatically loaded in the engine examples, so you don't you won't see it actually any type of loading code in here. Um, what we will see here is that here's the first bit. So at here, this is creating the Play Canvas app. So this is done for you in the editor, so you don't have to worry about this. And things like Canvas Filmo, Canvas Resolution, Skybox MIP Exposure, and the uh, Cube Map uh, set of bots. These are all done in the editor project settings. So if we go back to let's say rendering. This is all the Cube Map stuff. This is like the fill mode. Um, there's a MIP setting somewhere here. MIP, 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 uh, MIP setting and exposure and gamma. So those are all you can edit this directly in the editor. You don't have to actually uh, copy over the code for that. And come down here, it adds a um, entity with a camera component, so it adds a camera to a scene, uh, which again, we do through the scene hierarchy. So we've got a camera here already with a camera component, so we don't need to copy that either. So now we go down to, uh, oh, oh, and this bit uh, where it creates the hierarchy of entities. Uh, so again, this is what I've just done here when I imported the Dragon FBX uh, into the scene and added the template. Effectively, this is what I've done exactly the same thing uh, in the editor. So the bit that we are actually interested about is this. So here is a bunch of uh, initial effect initialization code. Um, for the example, where it oh sorry I missed oh, went too far. Let me go back. There. Uh, this is a bunch of initialization code uh, for the example where it uh, stores positions of sorry it stores all the meshes that are being used in the scene from the render components. Um, it stores all the positions of I think. The sort of positions of yeah, it stores the positions from the mesh, so it's, um, it stores all the vertex uh, vertices positions. Um, so use the minimum plate at runtime, so uh, uh, we can see that a bit later, and uh, it puts it into a it puts it into an array that can be used in the update loop. So run through this has all meshes in the array, uh, gets all the render components uh, from the cut from the entity that was created, so finds all the render components from the entity that's created and all its children. Um, and then in for each render uh, component, it gets all the mesh instances, gets the positions of the vertices for each mesh and pushes them into the array. Uh, then it starts the uh, Playcams application. Again, uh, Playcams does this for you, so uh, no need to worry. It gives a reference of uh, temporary uh, positions to avoid frame activations. So this, uh, this is just a, a temporary array that's used so you don't have to continuously create one each frame and generate garbage. And we've also got a time variable that keeps track of how much time has passed. Uh, and then in here, uh, it does the orbit cam animation. So it's moving the camera around the model. Uh, we don't need to do that. We've got a orbit cam uh, script already in the, in the project, a part of the model viewer. And here's the interesting part uh, where it actually does the deformation uh, logic where it moves the vertices around to create a sort of wavy pattern. So there's some math here, uh, but we can pretty much copy and paste that as is and get more or less the same effect. So what we've established here is there's an initialization step, uh, which is here, where it sets up all the data, and there's an update step where this is called every frame to update uh, the deformation. And the way we can do that in the editor, uh, or the easy way to do that editor, is to use a play canvas script type. So let's move into that. Uh, let me come out here, create a new script, call this deformation. Did I create it in a folder by accident? No, oh, it just took a while to create. There we go. And what we're going to do is go into the engine example and copy the initialization code that we saw earlier. Uh, doo -doo. And because we want to use this in the update loop, all meshes, uh, we will need to keep a reference to that um, so that we can use it later in the update. So what we're going to do is Put, make this part of the this property. Uh, make, sorry, make this a property of the script. So this all meshes, and then later on, store it in here. So reference that, and there we go. And what else do we need to keep for the initialization? What's the example? Uh, we need to keep temporary positions, 
and time. So let's put that in as well. There we go. And then for the update loop, uh, let's go down here. So I've got const strength. Come down into here. I'll put the NT upload. Okay, let's format that. Uh, command KF. And of course, this is assuming that uh, these variables have been locally scoped within uh, within the script. But in this case, because we're using the script type, we've added that previously in the initialization step as a, a part of the script type property. So you go back and add the this reference to this. So instead of all ref all measures, this would be uh, this dot all measures. So what we're going to do here is select the word, and then do command D. To select next uh to also multi-select the next word and do it again i think that's all of them there's all of them so everything in the update uh, let me go back here so everything in the update this dot all meshes that's great uh 10 positions also is being stored as part of the script type so we need to move that to this so we need to reference this as part of it to ensure that we use what we've allocated before or reference before. Uh, do we want to update. Uh, we want to update time. I think here we go. So yeah, uh, we add delta time to time. So we need to do that here too. This dot time plus equals delta time. That's great. And then we also we need to where do we where do we reference time? Here and here. Okay, that's not a problem. And I think that is about it off the top of my head. Um, but let's double check stuff. Uh, it's all meshes, source references, temp positions, everything. Cool. And then what we're going to do is now add it to the dragon NC so that uh, when it looks for. Ah, that's a good thing. Here you go. Here's an issue. So for this, we need to ensure that it's looking at the current NC that the script's attached to rather than an NC that was, uh, that was created by our code. Uh, so what we're going to do now is on script deformation and so when the initialization of the script is run it's going to look for at itself and all its children for a render component and then grab all the mesh instances and meshes out of that so let's just run that and see how that looks uh 10 position not defined so what i've done here i think i missed there you go yep so i missed a uh this dot property reference so let's refresh that and there we go we've got something happen in here so this potentially looks may look a bit weird because uh the model that was used in the example it could be different it could be a bigger size um and the numbers the constants that have been used here like the strength and this value um uh could have been adjusted just for that for model and because we're in a script now actually we can take advantage of uh editor features such as script attributes and live tweak them at runtime so what I'm going to do here is add a uh, script attribute for strength, which is a type of number. And we use that to replace uh, this constant that's hard coded here. So type, maybe my mouse code out of the way, and that tooltip number. And we're going to change the default to 50, because that's what the example was before. And I can't spell strength. And we're also going to do one for this uh, this value here, which I think is kind of like the wave intensity. Uh, so we'll call it wave intensity. Number and the fault was like 0.01, 0.01. .01. And let's uh, replace these numbers here. So where's strength being used? So strength being used here. So we change that to the script type property. And we move that because that's no longer being used. And we do the same here. Select that, command D, select both. This dot wave intensity. Let's uh let's go back here. Uh, refresh the script. Oh pause the script, sorry. Then definition uh, not a function. Oh, whoops, that's gonna be dot add. And repause that. There we go. And let's run that so we get make sure we get the same effect. 
So cool. It looks exactly the same, which is what uh, what is intended. So what I'm going to do now is let me just remove this window to be half the size and go back to the editor. And what we're going to do now is live tweak it to get it to the to an effect that we want. Um, so let's reduce the strength. So now it's no longer waving back and forth. And let's what happens if we do 0.1? Bit better 0.5 and there we go that's very that's a pretty reasonable like wave deformation effect and of course we can start we could start live tweet this like gradually as well we'll increase more why does it increase more there we go and we've got uh, an even more sort like bendy style sort like wavy dragon statue so awesome so just to recap um what we've done here let me put this back over here and we size this properly to the screen we've effectively copied the vast majority of the code from the engine example uh worked out which bit is the initialization and which bit is the update and placed it as such and also changed it so instead of relying on locally scoped variables like these uh engine example does we've moved those to be part of the property of the this point uh the this object uh which is the script type and on top of which uh, to make it a little bit better we're taking advantage of the edit features uh for script attributes so we can change these values at runtime to get the effect we want rather than having to change code change hard code number and refresh the launch tab each time and that's really about it uh, thank you very much for watching and we see you next time.